Hello, hello, what is up, my friends? Back on the Tellurian Only Free to Play, day 90. And I was holding off to collect that during the champion chase. Not that I'm going for the fusion or anything. Um, just because, you know, it might get me a, a little bit of extra rewards. We've got a 2x sacred going on. One day in 16 hours. So they're running the Teodora 10x for the entirety of the 2x sacreds. It looks, from what it looks like. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm misjudging. Uh, but we got some sacreds to summon. Realistically, the chances of pulling a Teodora are pretty slim, even if we get a Lego. Uh, but wouldn't that be just my luck if I pulled him, since I can't use him. Uh, but I do want to pull the sacreds. Apologies if there's any different... Uh, noise from the microphone today. I moved my setup upstairs for a little bit of spring cleaning, so I'm in a different uh, setup right now. But let's summon these sacreds. There's tons of legendaries we could pull that would help us out greatly. What we really need right now is basically like crowd control for the Doom Tower or something cool for Clam Boss to move up to Ultra Nightmare easier. But let's get it, get it going. Okay, we got a cage breaker. Oh, am I reading that right? Okay, so Teodore 10x ends tomorrow. So I should say wait till tomorrow, but who cares? We're here now. I'm recording. We might not even get a friggin' Le Lego at this rate. Come on, man. Okay, we got a Talia. She is in our faction. She puts a bomb when Fenex is on the same team. Okay, but we don't have a Fenex. Okay, so probably not going to be using Talia. Doom Priest. Solid champ, not for our factions. Yeah. Oh, Anchorite. That's actually a big pull. He's got the buff extension. Uh, AoE A1. Could be good in a stun set. One random debuff removed. Increases duration of all ally buffs by one turn. Okay, this is pretty solid. Fully heals a target ally, then places... Increase crit rate, increase crit damage buff on all allies. Alright, so this guy could be very useful. Full heal. It is a four turn cooldown, which is a bit unfortunate. But like, I could pair him with Giscard to extend that increased defense. Um... I don't know. I don't have ally protect, so it's not as useful. But that's not bad. It's a, a champ for our factions. And it's Sacred Order, which we need help with anyway. For the uh, faction wars. So I'm going to build him as for sure. And then we'll see if we can slot him in somewhere eventually. I don't know if he'd be better than using, like, one of my other champs, though, is my, my concern. Uh, I thought we'd take a jump into Hydra, because we do need to do Hydra this week. And show you what my new team is, I guess, capable of doing. I don't know if I need Rhonda in here anymore, because I think she dies pretty quick. And I do have Arbiter. Let's give this a go, see how it is. I did make it past that wave in Doom Tower, so uh, I'm stuck on the Nether Spider 60 now. Okay, maybe I should avoid hitting that guy. Get a provoke off. Okay, 
So now with AoE HP burn, as well as the provoke from Giscard, increased defense. That fear is very rough though. We're just going to try to take down this head as soon as we can to get rid of the cleanse. Um, decrease attack for the Head of Wrath would be nice. Wonder if it's worth bringing Arbiter instead of Jamarsa. Okay, hopefully we can get this Provoke off. Counterattacks are not good when they land on the Head of Wrath. And it looks like we're having a problem keeping Cronum alive, and he's our main source of damage. I don't think I have much better to put on him, though, in terms of tanky gear. Okay, I'm going to try to decrease the attack. And we didn't get it. Maybe bringing Stagnite is a better option. Decreased attack. Okay, good. We might be able to survive one more round. Yeah, Giscard, um, increased attack, increased defense. Getting that stolen is and spread over to the Head of Wrath is probably not ideal. I might need to replace him. Um, I do have that Barbarian Rare Sentinel that I'm thinking about leveling up soon. He might be a good candidate to bring in. Come on, Cronum. He doesn't do me much good when he's dead.
Oh, for fuck's sake. That, see, so yeah, counterattacking on the Head of Wrath is basically run ending at some points. That's so frustrating. One more turn for my revive. Perhaps I should be focusing down the head of wrath instead. Just to get him out of there, because... Yeah, that's way too much damage. Alright, I think I'm going to save this. I just wanted to show you guys the team I'm using. I'm going to save my key and try it again later. Because I think I can get up to a one, uh, top chest. I use this team uh, just for one of my advanced quests. But I think with my team I can probably get it, the rest of the damage for a top chest. So yeah, Doom Tower, we did finish this floor here with this team. Was it that floor or is 56? Yeah, this one. Now we're stuck at Nether Spider, and the team I was trying was something like this. And I got it down to below half, but just some unlucky RNG. Cooldown's not coming up in time. Um, so we failed. I'm thinking of rebuilding Chancellor Yasmin in some accuracy so I can try to strip the Spiderlings. And then I could potentially kill the Spiderlings. But I'll show you uh, the run on the boss and we'll see what happens. Yeah. So they do a ton of damage to me. Um... My basic idea here is double cleanser. Just try to cleanse as much as possible. And then everybody else heals. And I've got the revivers to pick anybody up if they fall. On paper, it should be an easy fight. But for some reason, I'm just not having much luck with it. You just catch a bad rotation of moves. Or relentless goes off at the right or the wrong time. And you don't get your cooldown back. And then Rhonda's just there to do damage. I tried bringing Arbiter instead, but it worked out worse for some reason. If I could strip these Spiderlings, then I could potentially just use Rhonda to kill the Spiderlings as much as possible. And then everybody else focuses on healing and reviving and stuff. See, I don't have a cooldown to uh, cleanse right now, so I'm kind of... This is this is where the run falls apart, when one of their cooldowns isn't up. But I should be able to get back around here. Oh. And then I just healed the wrong Reliquary Tender, who didn't have her cooldown coming back up. Beautiful. And my revive is still a little bit of ways away. Okay, so I should probably cleanse here. And it didn't matter. So I either need to boost everybody's speed up significantly. Or maybe bring in Stagnite to decrease the boss's speed. Or put uh, accuracy on my Chancellor Yasmin so I can try to strip the Spiderlings. But this is where I'm stuck currently. Same floor as Odd One, actually. He uh, started grinding a little bit over the past couple days, so he's caught up to me. And hash him up here with the... Floor 111. Almost completed. Um, 
I guess it, it would be possible for me to get this sacred before the 2x sacred ends, but I'd have to be able to climb today. I'd have to be able to make it up 10 floors today. So I'm going to give that a shot and I'll come back later. Guys, I forgot we got a sacred from the monthly quest today. So we're going to pop that. Yes. 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 It is a legendary we can use. Oh, and it's a good one too. Shiramani, AoE freeze. Four turn cooldown, 100% chance to freeze. But it does give her back like turn meter, so it's kind of like almost a three turn cooldown. Got freeze on her A1, 25% chance, three times at random. And then an AoE heal on a three turn cooldown. Yo, that's huge. Uh, not the best we could have pulled, but definitely usable. This might actually help me in Nether Spider. If you think about it, I don't need to strip the Spiderlings if I can AoE freeze them. Plus, she's got this huge heal. The only downside is her three hit at random. So when the Spiderlings come unfrozen, um, yeah, that could be a problem. That's nice though. Uh, plus I do, I will wait for CVC before I book her, I think. Ten. She takes ten books and I've got ten books. So hopefully we can avoid the three on her A1. That's very nice. All right, so I'll, I'll be back. All right, guys, I re-geared my Chancellor Yasmin, and I wanted to try something out. Okay, not quite, not quite a full strip. Um, what I wanted to try was bringing in Chronum. The idea being, if I could get a full strip, then I could HP burn and use that for the damage. But I think, like, we would definitely need a full strip. Otherwise, we get all those counterattacks and then we end up dying. And when Cronum uses his Berserker's Delight, it basically is just a... Yeah, he can't use this move or else it's going to hit the spiders that have their counterattacks up and we're going to take more poisons and heal the spider. Theoretically, though, if we could get a full strip... We could HP burn all the spiders, but we'd need to get like a full strip every single time. I wonder if Chronum can just solo it. No, because he's going to trigger their counterattacks. But HP burn is one of the best ways to kill the spider. So if we could get like super lucky and get this, the full strip two times in a row. I'm going to give it a couple of attempts, and then I'll see. All right, it took a couple more attempts, but I got the full strip. So the idea here with Chronum is now Jamarsa can put de decreased speed on the boss. Nice, we got it up first try. And now we just need to avoid dying. So we get the HP burn up. I 
Oh my god. Is that like a hidden move he has when he... When the spiders lose their... Counterattack? Counterattacks whenever an enemy decreases Agra's turn meter. I do have evil eye on everybody. Oh, here it is. Attacks all enemies, places a 5% poison. Will repeat the attack one time for each spiderling without any buffs. Oh, that's rough. Because without that... Without that, I may have been able to uh, just HP burn him down before my team wipes. But I don't think that's going to happen now. Yeah, because look at that. He attacks four times. If you have Drexthar... He's the best way to apply the HP burn because he doesn't have to attack them to do it, so he won't proc their counter attack. Okay, so I need to bring in Shiramani instead of Chancellor Yasmin because then she can freeze them all. And when they're frozen, they won't be able to counter attack. But do I really want to wait until clan v clan to do that i'm gonna try chancellor yasmin well oh i can't because if i strip them then she's the spider's just gonna go nuts i think shirmani's really the only answer i have unless i want to try to rng it like i was with my ronda team Shiramani. It's a lot of CVC points I'd be spending. But like we've never really won any CVCs. So I don't know if it's that big of a deal. I don't know. I'm going to think about it a little bit. Maybe uh, attempt the spider a couple more times and then make a decision. Checking in with Live Arena. We just made it to Bronze 4. The fights today have been pretty good. Uh, yeah, lots of wins. The big boss here. What a name, eh? Level 82. That was a close fight, but I did manage to win. I think the strategy... Is just speed teams in the early game. Like when you're down here in, in bronze and that. Speed teams seem to be uh, doing the trick. Not like I have any other options at this point, but. Okay. <laughs> Level 98. That's not good. Okay. Well, I've got one token. Oh, t yeah, one token left. See if I can find a decent fight to show you guys. And a level 100. All right, so I guess we won't be watching an arena fight today. I wonder if it's because I just moved up a bracket that I'm getting harder opponents. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
I was going to show you guys a fight, but that's not going to happen. Almost up to silver. F exactly 50% win rate over 100 battles. And for area bonuses, I'm upgrading my clan boss speed. Apparently, the ignore defense doesn't work on Giant Slayer or Warmaster procs. So it's probably not going to add that much damage. So I'm just going to go for speed and then probably just get everything up to level like... Get everything up to level 3. Maybe not resistance. And then I'll upgrade some Hydra stuff. Just get a little more survivability, more accuracy and resist. The first three levels are super cheap. So I think it makes sense to just level a bunch of stuff to, to three. Anyways, we'll be back. Just dropping back in because I'm going to buy some more clan shop accessories. So we're going to see what we get from here. Undead Horde, Banner Lord's Ring, 6 star. High Elves Banner, 6 star. Uh, 2 for 10. Pretty decent odds, I think. High Elves Accuracy with Speed. That could be very good. Especially since I have uh, double attack. Especially since I have Shiramani now. Okay, triple attack. Oh, that feels like it's almost worth reworking if it wasn't accuracy. It might be something we rework down the line. And this is perfect stats hit points ring. So hopefully it hits hit points. Nice. I'm going to level that up ASAP. And we've also got a new um, set of Relentless here from the tag tournament. Oh, that's nice. This cannot, really can't roll badly at all. I'm going to save it for the artifact event so I can use it as dummy rolls. Oh, damn, dude. Hit points, accuracy, res, and speed. These are like Sill of the Drake. Sill of the Drake special. These are both going on Sill when I get her. This one, not... Really worth rolling. Unless it like quad rolls accuracy. Come on game. Yeah, that's going to be a sell. Oh, damn dude. If that was switched around, that'd be nice. Probably still worth keeping if it rolls decent. Okay, so it can be a defense or an attack nuker. Attack percent with crit and speed. Hopefully it avoids the resist and hit points. Oh, okay. Can't win them all. And some flat boots again. So let's look at our complete relentless uh, stockpile. So we've got quite a lot of it now. I was saving some of these pieces to roll in case I wanted to use Chaos Ores on them. But I don't think I'm going to uh, waste them on these. Unfortunately, our really our only good speed boots... Well, let's go to Equipped. Our only good speed boots are 5-star. We've got one pair of six star speed. <laughs> it's 
Some of these can probably be sold too, but I'm not going to go through them quite yet. So that's about how much keepable uh, Relentless gear that I have on day 91. And I'll be back. Alright, so we should be able to show you some live arena today. I do, do have my Arbiter max level now. I've been running Masteries on Shiromani. And I'm getting Arbiter and Stagnite to level 60. While I farm those. This looks like a frightening team. At this point, I think I have to ban Krisk. But I have to ban Pythion too. If I can kill their Kandrafon right off the bat, then I may be able to get, uh, take the win. If their Martyr is built for damage, though, I'm kind of screwed. Plus, he's got... Uh... I forgot about that. So... I guess I just try to kill the Krisk. Never mind, my Rhonda is too slow. Okay, their Kandrafon doesn't seem to be built for much damage. So we need to block the Provoke. But we can probably try to kill Kandrafon here. Not quite. Their Kandrafon's built like tanky with little, not much damage. We might have an opportunity to kill him here. We basically have to get lucky with Rhonda joining the attack. Okay, it didn't work. Yeah, that's not going to happen. What a weird build for the Kandrafon. We actually just took out a level 100 too. Once I get Shiromani built, I'm probably going to start bringing her instead of Jamarsa. For that 100% AoE freeze. Alright, so I can't ban his damage dealers. He's got two speed leads. But Deacons has only decreased defense, so I have to hope. I have to hope that's correct. I doubt our Deacon can beat his speed, but we'll see. If I go first, there's a good chance I win, unless he's in a really big shield set. Yeah, well, he's got a shield set. And he went first. And his Brogni's speed tuned, so now he's going to put up a shield. Yeah, we're basically screwed.
I forgot to put up increased attack. Alright, so I'm just gonna do an AoE nuke. So that guy has the same strategy that I use. Two speed leads, two nukers, and then one flex spot. My Deacon isn't really built for speed though. Um, I haven't built tanky because I use him in clan boss. This live arena is actually making me want to play my main again. This would be a lot more fun with a bunch of dedicated arena champions. Okay, so... Elva's going to be a pain in the ass, but his Arbiter is probably way faster than mine. So I have to hope I can go before his Elva. She's only got a single target revive. So if I can kill the rest of the team before he gets a chance to go, I can win. I'm going to use the heal to boost Rhonda. And I'm going to block Elva from using skills. And then hopefully... Oh, I forgot it. I forgot increased attack. Damn it. Oh, that's rough. Okay, luckily it didn't end up mattering. So yeah, here's the level 100 I beat. He was using a really strange team. The pick that I banned was his Arbiter. But he's got a royal foot foot guard royal guard in there. Like what? Okay, definitely have to ban his Duchess. Unless he pulls out an Arbiter. Okay, who do I want to deal with? Duchess or Pythion? That's a rough one. I don't think there's any good answer there. So my plan in here is to block Pythion from using any moves. And hopefully his Nishak isn't built really tanky, which it looks like he is. It looks like my Ronda's going to get to go... before the others do. So I have to block him. Otherwise he's just gonna revive everybody anyway. So I might just end up dying here.
Depends how much attack he's got on him. Yikes. Come on, man. I'll be honest, I get absolutely frustrated playing live arena as well. Like, it can be fun, but then when you don't have arena champs and your champs aren't geared for arena, every time you lose, you're like, if I had just, like, if my Rondo was built for arena, she would have been faster and that could have been fine. Or if such and such champion was built for arena, and then you just barely lose, it's like so frustrating. Okay, so he's got two speed leads, but he's only got one damage dealer. So of course we're going to ban the Foley. I don't know what he's hoping to accomplish. Maybe he's just going to provoke and wear me down. <laughs> this is going to be a long fight. Level 96 and this is his strategy? Man, that's very strange. I got to kill his Arbiter and his Molly first. To uh, get their revives out of here. His Molly's in a Frost set. Okay, his Madam actually does a decent amount of damage. And we got feared. I guess if he just moves fast enough. He just keeps getting turns and we don't get to, we don't get to take a turn because of the provokes. Yeah, two turn provoke on my Jamarsa, it's not gonna work. Losing to such a stupid team. Okay, level 100, Arbiter and Pytheon first picks. Level 100, I fought like, like probably like four or five people level 100 today. <laughs> That's my live arena experience for today. See if we can upgrade anything in here. Not really. Our next upgrade is probably going to be one of these. All right, we'll be back. So I've decided... That I am going to max out my Shiromani. Because there's only three days left. In the Doom Tower rotation. And if I wait for Clan v Clan. Um, if I'm able to pass the Spider. 
I won't be able to get any further than that, so. And we're using the barrel because I farmed her masteries going from level 1 to 50. And I don't plan to use her in any dungeon content, so she won't be gaining XP. So this is the perfect time to use a barrel. And then we'll go ahead and book her out. We need 6 on our A3. Okay, if we can get one more. Okay, two more. <laughs> We're going to end up having to fully book her, aren't we? Yep. Figures. Okay, I need to farm some potions, so I'll go do that. Afterwards, we're going to gear her out, and then go push the rest of High Elf Faction Crypt. Alright, so I've geared out my Shiromani. Uh, we've got the artifact event running, so I'm going to finish leveling all these artifacts soon. But I did want to jump into High Elf's Faction. I decided to go with the Relentless. Because her skills have such high cooldowns, and they're very impactful, uh, I do want to rotate those as much as possible. I considered um, going for Eagle Eye, just for more accuracy, for Arena and stuff like that, but I'm not too sure. I could also go for Fearsome Presence to get extra chance for her A1 Freeze to land. But her, her AoE freeze is 100% anyway, so it doesn't really impact that. And I also considered going for Unshakable. Uh, if I want to build her in a high resist tanky build. I kind of went with a similar to Sill of the Drakes build. So I'm putting some of my Sill gear on her. Or gear that's going to go to Sill eventually. And she doesn't need to do any damage, so I just went for defensive masteries and some accuracy. So yeah, that's what she's rocking. The HP is a little low, because I, I don't have any good HP chests for her in these sets. So I'm going to hope this is good enough. Rocking the accuracy amulet, so she's got enough accuracy. Uh, I'm going to try Nether Spider with that, and we'll see how it goes. But first we'll jump into High Elf Faction, just to finish off. And we can probably just remove one of our reliquary tenders she'll be bringing that team-wide heal aoe freeze very very nice for wave-based content i considered putting her in a stun set as well because her a1 is multi-target it's like it hits three three enemies randomly if it was an AoE A1, I probably would. But an AoE A1 with a freeze on it would be super busted. The, there's also the other thing is that she can weak hit her AoE freeze. So if I put her in a stun set with Fearsome Presence, that could help compensate for that. But I think uh, just rotating skills as fast as possible is better. Try to get back to that heal as fast as I can. Because a three-turn AoE heal like that is quite big, especially if I have Jamarsa on the team. Jamarsa's passive has the chance to reduce the cooldown of that whenever she uses it. So I'm hoping that has some pretty good synergy. But yeah, the idea is just make her as tanky, as fast as possible with Relentless. Get those extra turns proccing, and she's just going to lock down waves. I'm going to take it off auto just to make sure the last wave goes smoothly. Probably don't need to, but I don't want to have to run this again.
All right, and now she should be using her. All right, let's proc this guy's passive if we can. Okay, then we'll use Arbiter to strip the buffs. And then we'll just hit auto and it should work out. Actually, I want to kill Blood Gorged here because he's got Block Revive. And he's going to go right after Alhane. And Alhane won't be able to take more than one hit of that. So we'll kill him first just to be safe. And then we'll go after Seeker. And there's that wave lockdown from Shiramani. I don't know if I'd prefer to put her in a high resist build to make her tanky for Doom Tower Waves. Or if just going straight into speed would be more effective. So we're going to go through and 3 star the rest of this and we'll come back in on stage 21. Alright, so we're on 21. Should be full auto. Uh, once you get Arbiter and she's well built, the only thing that you really got to worry about is getting feared on the boss. But as long as Arbiter can stay alive, she can just keep reviving everybody else. I could have done this without Shiramani, with two Reliquary Tenders, or with an Apothecary if I had one. And level 50 Elhane is fine. It just it makes the run take longer if she's not level 60. But any damage dealer works there. But basically the combo of like a really good art well-built arbiter along with any type of other support healer and uh any da any damage dealer level 50 works. And yeah, it should be an auto farm now so I can auto farm Banner Lords, 21, I believe. Uh, I can auto farm High Elves. And... What's my other faction? Sacred Order. <laughs> Banner Lords, High Elves. Oh yeah, I can auto farm Barbarians, 21 as well. So the last faction we have to complete will be Sacred Order. We did pull that Anchorite. Which, uh, along with Deacon and, and Aethel and an Armager, I think should be enough to be able to squeak through. So once I build Anchorite, we'll give that a shot. He'll probably be the next champion I build. I've got Mother Superior. I can get to level 50 as well and just throw in some gear. The tricky part is not having a Reviver. So everyone needs to be tanky enough to survive at least one hit. Especially since I'm not bringing much crowd control. Maybe Anchorite will be in a stun set because he's got that AoE A1. Other than that, uh, it's just Deacon with turn meter control. Eventually I'd like to move Deacon to a stun set as well. I think that'll be pretty clutch for hard Doom Tower once we get to the higher waves. I'm going to go ahead and target the Maneater. Just to make sure this uh, Maneater and Steel Skull to make sure they don't get all their cleanses and increased defense off. Which they probably will anyway, but we'll see. Okay. Yeah, we weak hit the freeze there, which is unfortunate. Go back to targeting Maneater to make sure he doesn't get his block damage off. But yeah, as I said, they're strong enough to auto this. I just don't want it to take forever.
Okay, so we should kill Steel Skull with some AoE. Yeah. We'll target Norog next, since he can't be frozen. Okay, well, some, somebody kill Maneater. There we go. I thought we would have some kind of AoE to help with, with that, but... Okay, I'm just going to save my cooldowns just to make sure the last round goes quickly. So I think this one we do have to kill the... Yeah, we've got to kill the adds because they heal him. And I think this is the one, yeah. So this is where you would like to have some resist on your Arbiter. Just to make sure she doesn't get feared at the wrong time. We go after the right hand minion first because he puts up increased speed. This one puts up increased defense. We don't really care about increased defense because uh, we're not attacking the boss yet. If you get down to only Arbiter left and she has no resist, um, she can be provoked repeatedly by the boss, in which case you'll fail to get your revive off and you'll just slowly die. That heal is really nice from Shiramani. It's a lot bigger than I was expecting. Okay, we'll target the other uh, ad now, and we should kill the first one with AoE.
All right, towards the end here, you do want to, when you're three-starring it, you want to make sure you save your cooldowns. Especially if you have a brimstone on there. You just need to be able to make sure you got your, revi your revive off at the right time. Should be good now. There we go. High elves complete. So that's uh, Banner Lords. We've finished 21 three star. We just need to three star some of the earlier stages. Barbarian's done, so Sacred Order's next. And I guess we're going to get up to this chicken as our reward. Um, where are we? We're at 260. Okay, so we'll get that chicken. We'll probably get a rare book, and we might get this next Ancient Shard. And then we'll be completed with Faction Wars. So I'm going to take a stab at Nether Spider after I level some artifacts and we'll see how Shiromani works out. Got a little update on the 3v3 arena situation. We're currently in bronze four, just trying to stay in bronze four this week, I think. Our teams aren't quite good enough to rank up yet. Uh, some of these competition, some of the competition here is quite fierce. We're still using the strategy now of two stacked teams and one throwaway team. But we've got some new champs in the mix with some really good synergy, actually. So I'm quite happy with it. Um, in this case, I actually think this team can probably beat this team. Maybe. I'm pretty sure this team will beat this team because I can lock out Wither. And this team will win as long as we win the speed race. So I'll walk you through what my new team synergies are like. Um, if you recall, I used to just have Reliquary Tenders in here filling up spots. But now we have Turn Meter Boost, Increased Attack, Decreased Defense, Decreased Attack. We got our Nuker. Okay. Well, anyway, and then we have Oathbound with his A3. 100% uh, chance to block active skills if the enemy has a decreased attack up. So it's really good synergy with our Stagnite there, providing the decreased attack and decreased defense. So they don't have a Reviver here, so I just need to kill their Dark Alhain. Which may or may not work. We've got that instant revive on Cronum. I can heal him to proc some HP burns. Proc some more HP burns. And I think we'll try to take out Tayrell here. Decrease his turn meter a little bit. We've got Reliquary Tender for some heals and uh, cleansing. And then we've got the buff strip, which also can put people to sleep for a little bit of control. 
It doesn't synergize too well with HP burn because the HP burns will wake them up. But it's, a, it's the best I can do right now, so that's what I'm working with. And then, of course, we've got this huge single target heal. So it's just like a tanky, annoying team that tries to outlast the opponents. It is my throwaway team, though. So if this this one, I like, if there's a match that I know I'm not going to win, I just throw this team in there and let it run on auto for a bit and see what happens. We'll just keep procking these HP burns as much as we can. Hopefully we can kill one of them soon. Got our big single target heal. It's just a really annoying team to deal with. <laughs> Jamars has got high resist too, so she can resist quite a bit of stuff. Okay, we need to kill one of them soon. Oh, great. Uh, I'm going to cleanse here first. Maybe we'll get a... Yeah, we got an extra turn, which is nice. So we can revive our Chancellor Yasmin. Just to take a hit for us. There goes the Deacon. And I'm going to heal Chancellor Yasmin just to secure the victory. And that should be a, an easy auto out. Chancellor Yasmin's out of her high resist toxic set. Now she's got some accuracy on her. And then our third team here, which is quite nice... We've got speed boost, or turn meter boost, decreased defense. Rhonda can proc her passive, and then we've got the freeze. 100% chance, as long as I don't weak hit. Into discard, increased defense, increased strength. And then we've got our nuke. So this gives us a lot of tankiness. We can come back around to Shiramani, she's got her heal. But she's also got her A1 freeze, which has more chances to freeze. Evil Eye to decrease turn meter. And then we've got Giscard on his second turn. He can provoke for more lockdown. And then finally, just finish it off with Rhonda. More freezes. She's in Relentless, so she can get some extra turns. So pr not too bad, honestly. I'm pretty happy with how the teams are working out. We'll see if we can find another fight worth taking here. We can probably kill this guy if our Arbiter wins the speed race. Or we could just sacrifice that fight. And guarantee we'll win too. I think these are both both pretty guaranteed wins. Um, but we'll try it. Deacons aren't typically built as fast as an Arbiter would be. Uh, I'm going to send this one against this team. That's a pretty sure win. As long as their Lady Kimmy isn't built too fast. Which is level 50, so it shouldn't be. And this team may be able to win out. Uh, no, th these guys got a lot of healing. But we'll see. We do have that buff strip, which can come in handy to block some of those continuous heals. Okay, so our Arbiter does get the first move. Decrease defense, decrease attack. A little bit of nuke. And then here's the, the really cool thing. Four times at random... 100% chance to block active skills if they have a decreased attack on. 
So I'm just going to use it on her to, f um, to finish her off. And then I'm hoping it'll block active skills on her too. No, but we got a stun with the sun stun set. So Ray doesn't get a chance to nuke. We just need to kill Trunda again here. Which didn't work out. And we got cleaned. Unfortunate. Yeah, I think we might lose two out of three fights here. Not looking too favorable. Gonna heal the Jamarsa to make sure she can take another turn. Okay, yeah, this is going to take way too long. I don't really care that much. And hopefully we can win this one, at least. Give us our freeze. Increased attack. And nuke. So, I should have sent my Arbiter team against the second team and guaranteed two wins. But I got greedy and it backfired. So like this is what I'm looking for. This team will probably beat me. So I sacrifice speed team against their go second. Speed team against their go second. Should be fine. Once I get Archmage Helmet, he'll probably be in this team in place of the reliquary tender, but we'll see. Okay, their nukers aren't nuking quite as much as I expected. So there's a small chance we could win this. gonna heal Cronum since he seems to be tanking. I don't care about the increased attack because Gala's already used hers up and Magnar is an HP base nuker. Um, just gonna use this to heal up our team. We gotta take down Arbiter first. Apparently their Magnar doesn't have full crit. Okay, we will do the strip here because Gala still has a turn left and maybe we'll sleep somebody. Um, I'm going to wake him up with HP burn anyway, so we'll go ahead and reapply. And we'll revive. Hopefully he gets another turn off. We'll, uh, we'll heal him up with our Chancellor Yasmin here if we can. Yeah. We'll save the heal because we don't really need it right now and there's no HP burns to activate. Ooh. That was rough. Okay, we've got HP burns up again. Kill the Arbiter. 
nice. Try to sleep people. Or at least buff strip them. I'm going to hold off one turn on the revive because Gala is about to go next. And she will likely kill Jamarsa if I were to revive her. Now it's a little bit more fav- well, not quite, but maybe a little bit more favorable of timing. We just really need to kill this Gala. Perfect. Give ourselves a heal. <laughs> Just barely surviving. Activate some HP burns. Nice. Ooh. Okay, I think at this point we've won, so I'll just put it on auto. So that's a good example of my throwaway team being able to clutch out a win that I wasn't expecting to get. It's still Bronze 4, so the teams aren't built necessarily too crazy. So I'm going to use this on Mash a Lead just to make sure he dies. And hopefully it splashes over and blocks active skills over here. Okay, we've got one block active skills, which is nice. Unfortunately, they still got a, a Relentless proc. And then we got stunned. And now Mash Lead gets a turn. Which completely shuts our team down. And we got feared. So that's a loss. Well, good thing we won the first fight. Nasty Relentless proc screwed us over. And there's a second. So I'm just going to go through and clear some more fights, and then we'll come back later. We're back on Nether Spider 60. I tried a few variations with Shiramani. The problem is, even though her stun is 100%, there is all, like, almost always one of the spiderlings wouldn't get frozen. And then he would... Eventually, then he would heal the boss and take away all the work I've done. Um, so yeah, I tried bringing heal reduction with Prosecutor. That didn't work because Prosecutor was too squishy. I eventually decided to try Stagnite just for the slow speed. And it seems to be a lot more stable than every other strategy I've tried. So we're just praying for... Jamarsa passive procs and relentless procs with our reliquary tenders. Stagnite's keeping up the decreased speed. And we're cleansing when we need to. Healing whenever we can. And just slowly whittling the boss down. And because of the decreased speed, it's actually been quite manageable. Whereas before we were just getting overrun. Now we have time for cooldowns to come back. Um, but I'm just waiting for that time where I don't get any Relentless procs and I don't get the cooldowns back in time. Or if I don't land decreased speed multiple turns in a row. So we'll see. Like right here I don't have... I didn't get a Relentless proc. And now the boss is going to nuke me. Yeah, so that's the first time that's happened. Um, 
I think we can recover. Okay, we got an extra turn. I'm going to use this just for some heals. We've still got the cleanse on this reliquary tender. And then she got an extra turn. So now we're starting to get back on top of things. Got the decrease speed back up. Hopefully we can recover from this. But it just goes to show you, if I had Drekstar right now, this fight would have been over 10 minutes ago because Drekstar would just apply HP burn to everybody. And then as long as I can tank for a few turns, the HP burn will kill the boss. So hopefully I don't make a mistake. I'm going to go on pause and then we'll come back and hopefully with the clear. It's looking good. I honestly thought we would get stuck here at Nether Spider for this rotation. I don't think we're going to fail this close to the end, but you never know. Uh, but at least I know I can do it. There's no reason this strategy wouldn't work on the highest tier in Other Spider. Just the speeds would have to be increased. Uh, they'll be dealing more damage. So definitely not ideal. But it is possible. One more hit. One more hit. There we go. Nether Spider 60 completed. So now we've got a few hours before reset. I'm going to try to push up to 69. But I'm going to end the video here. Another insanely long one. Which I apologize for. Um, but if you are watching and enjoying the videos. Like the video. Uh, leave a comment if you like for the algorithm. And I'll catch you in the next update.